down to a, a next phase where I've got the rails shaped, sanded, everything's rounded over, ready for uh, staining. Uh, I wanted to get, uh, as I said earlier in an earlier video, uh, I sand down the edges of the uh, tape to remove what they call the selvage, it's like the weave over. It tends to stand up and be proud when, um, after it's uh, been uh, cured with epoxy. So I sand that down, uh, I'll vacuum out the interior, wipe it down two or three times with a damp cloth to get all the dust and stuff out of it. And then uh, I'll go ahead and put a thin coat of epoxy over the complete interior. But I wait until after I stain the rails because I don't want to take, have you seen <laughs> dripping gel magic? I don't want to drip any epoxy over my nice uh, rails until after I've stained them and they're ready for uh, some epoxy. And then uh, I'll let the uh, stain cure for two or three days to let it harden up uh, and uh, to dry out. And then I'll put on a thin layer of epoxy uh, and then probably sand it down and then we'll sand it down later and then put another coat on near the final stages. But once I get the stain and a little bit of epoxy, then I'll go ahead and finish up the inside with a skin coat of epoxy uh, to seal off any of the exposed areas, especially under the parts that will be covered up with what I call my, uh, my pyramid seating uh, uh, scheme, uh, which we'll see later when I start doing that part. So I've got everything salvaged out now, they're sanded, and then I will uh, We'll start doing the staining on the rails. Okay, we've got everything's finished up here. Uh, you can see where I put in the easy fillet. They had a gap up in here where the nose of the centerpiece came into the V, and I didn't want to take hours and hours to try to dry fit that thing so it fit perfectly. Uh, just fill it up with easy fillet. Uh, puts a nice, you know, sand it down. Puts a nice stain on it. Same with this. It's all in and smooth. Uh, I don't know, maybe a purist might say, okay, well, maybe another coat or a hint to act. Do you remember what we said about the five foot rule? Five foot away, it looks perfect. So, uh, okay, I'm doing my staining now, and I've got a one I'm uh, putting on called uh, Colonial Pine, which gives it a kind of a nice, oh, medium dark brown color. And uh, I had been using kind of a red mahogany, but I thought I would go to this color. I'd, uh, used this color stain on some wood carvings I had done and I liked the, uh, the way the, uh, the tone came out on it. And I did some sample tests on the, on the various woods here and it, and it looked good. So, okay, we've got our breast hooks all finished off, uh, stained and everything. I'm ready for the interior. I've got the dagger board, which we'll see in the next video on thinning out the interior. It's kind of a little jump ahead, kind of like a, a lost episode. Uh, one of the things I forgot to do uh, earlier uh, was one of those mental things. I thought I did it, but I didn't. Uh, on the shaping, uh, when I got done with the breast hooks, there was a lot of rough edges because they were stair-stepped down as they went out from the center to the edges. Uh, the tops were a little uneven, so I took either my little low-angle plane or my uh, probably about an A5 size old Stanley I got and just rough them down. You got to be really careful on this wood uh, uh, with so many different grains. Uh, you can't really, I didn't know which way the grain was going until I started planing. I found that I was able to get most of the stuff uh, planed this way without any rips. I got some spots in the oak where the grain was going the other way and so I got some tear up. Uh, you just kind of got to work around and see what you're doing and see what happens. Take it slow. Same with on the, uh, the rails, countersunk, my stainless screws. Some earlier boats I had covered these with uh, easy fillet, uh, but it, it didn't uh, need to be done. Uh, I like them uh, proud now. It's just a lot of extra steps to have to do. This is another spot where you're going to be using the plane to uh, level out the, uh, the rails. Try to get the outside rail when you first install it close to the plywood or let the plywood stand proud. Set the spacer block to the outside rail and then the inner rail to the two combinations. And then take your plane and lightly plane it down. Be careful all the time thinking about which way the grain is going so you don't rip it up. Uh, figure out which way the grain is, take light steps, don't do too much at one time, and you should uh, be ahead of the game. And then sand it, do all your finish sanding by hand. I usually don't use a machine other than on the flat surfaces on the top and then maybe roll it over the side. Most of the time when I round the edges, I'll use a small hand uh, rasp 
I've done it before with a, uh, a router, uh, but I've had bad luck when I would invariably go the wrong direction and the router would uh, kick out an edge and, and all because it's under such a tension uh, that it may want to blow out. So I never, I had one experience and I don't want to repeat that, especially with I got the scarfs down here on the outside. Uh, so do it by hand, hand sanded, uh, let it stain, make sure the stain, if, uh, if you're going to be putting epoxy a joint on the stain, uh, do a test sample with stain on the wood you're using, uh, glass in a piece of uh, glass tape or some old cloth with a little bit so you can pull off with a, uh, uh, a vice grips, let it cure, and then pull it off. See if it pulls off, you don't want to use that stain. If it sticks, then it's okay to use, but I never stain anything I'm going to glass over for strength. Uh, I'll only use the stain on the rails where I'm going to uh, uh, just put some epoxy on for surface protection and then uh, underlayment for the varnish. So that should do it on uh, the rails. Uh, we'll go on with the interior fitting. Now that I have my centerboard trunk finished, we'll do that next because it controls the rest of the boat. See you next time.